Good evening, folks. I hope you're well. It's been a while. I thought I'd hop on the old live streaming game again. Do a bit of an off season um, update from us and chat with you guys. I'm having a bit of a roller coaster of an internet connection at this particular moment, so I'm going to hit play on a video and just have a little uh, prana tweak. Uh, it's a torch and earmark for preservation. In June 1991, the association was offered XR724, a lifeless, engineless airframe, but which turned out to be in such good condition the group decided to recover it for flight and hopefully display. Several diverse groups came together, and with the particular support of the Plymouth based Lightning Flying Club, who loaned two engines, the aircraft was reassembled. January 1992 saw the aircraft complete and ready for its first engine test. The aircraft was now 100% serviceable and ready to fly. All it needed was for the Civil Aviation Authority to issue a permit. Unfortunately, the conditions imposed by the CAA were impossible to meet and the aircraft remained grounded for six months. It was proving costly in fuel and manpower to perform the obligatory routine engine starts and the aircraft's continued presence on a military airfield was becoming an embarrassment. The Lightning Association appealed to British Aerospace, the original manufacturers, and they offered to inspect the aircraft and fly it themselves to Binbrook under a military serial. And so it was, on a cold and windswept July day, that XR724 returned to its former home, from where the CAA can be pursued and, it is hoped, allow the aircraft to fly again. Back again. Thank you. It's yours now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right.
thought we'd kick off with a bit of lightning and uh, end with a bit of lightning as well. So do stick around for the end. And I say stick around because I am having internet issues. So if it's buffering for you, I am sorry. I own this lovely piece of equipment here, which will bond four internet connections and give me a really reliable signal. But I thought, you know, my home internet's great. It never had, never have an issue. But um, maybe if I disappear, you might see me come back to life having plugged this in and uh, actually making use of the very expensive piece of kit that we use out at air shows to give us live streams where we don't have a um, hardwired connection. And it's always a good backup. There's no good reason not to be using it. So uh, bad. Uh, it's, an, it's, a, it's a reminder of why I own these pieces of equipment. But um, hopefully, you, it, hopefully things settle down and you are able to enjoy a bit of classic jets this evening. So that video there was um, uh, Binbrook, 1992, 30 years ago. That's an aeroplane and an organisation my dad was involved with, and I was there on that day. Not very old, I'll, I'll uh, level with you. But uh, that was XR-74 returning from Warson to uh, Binbrook, um, where it still is and is looked after. There's a great um, group on Facebook. You can follow the progress of um, those guys looking after XR-724 at Binbrook, which Gary, was it, quite rightly says is in uh, yeah, North Lincolnshire, I suppose deepest, darkest Lincolnshire. Our office used to be on site um, at my neck of the woods. Welcome, everybody. Lovely to see you all. Um, an evening of classic jets. As I say, we'll start with lightning. We're going to end with the lightning back to Binbrook for some um, of the last lightning air show, uh, the last Binbrook air show uh, at the very end. Um, a few other bits and pieces in between. Uh, you can have a bit of a guess about the aeroplanes that might be involved based on the stuff we've seen at air shows over the last 30 years. This is all from our archive, um, which as you know full well, you can find on um, uh, watch.planesdb.com. That's our full length air show programs available to subscribers over there. Right, another little video then. So this is given when we were releasing uh, programs on DVD and Blu-ray. There's a limited amount of time available on them. So I've um, extended an edit on the Sea Vixens display at in 2009. This includes an onboard uh, camera, uh, Matt Whitfield, I think, at the controls. So hopefully a nice sequence. And I'd like to know, I'd like to see in the chat.
Championship for the two cars. Again, compared with the stock. Nice full display sequence of the Civics in there at Biggin Hill. Uh, who was I identifying that? I know. Oh, so yeah, Peter's saying it's buffering frequently. Yes, we're having some connectivity problems, guys. But um, hopefully things have settled down now. By my reckoning, it's about four minutes since we last had an issue. So uh, hopefully we can enjoy some classic jets this evening together without the uh, internet gremlins. Keep your fingers crossed. Um, someone said they noticed the Viggen 
uh, who was it? It wasn't Les, it was, I think it was Artful said they noticed a Vigan uh, exhaust um, in the thumbnail. It's actually the Lightning and it's actually from that first video. It's XR724 undergoing some engine tests at uh, Wharton, I believe, the nice uh, diamonds in the reheat. Um, but yeah, that's the thumbnail. But not to disappoint you, we do have a bit of Vigan coming up next. Uh, this was, I th I'm going to show you lots of archive material, including stuff from the dim and distant past. You know, we're talking 30 years ago where the quality isn't quite quite up to scratch. Hopefully that big and hill material was all right from uh, 13 years ago. Still doing all right, even in uh, even all this time later. Although the, the onboard camera there, I noticed, that was our first HD um, uh, GoPro. It wasn't a GoPro, but uh, our first mini cam that was capable of recording in HD. And uh, it's not quite as wide angle as you'd like in a quite compact cockt cockpit like the Civics in there. So you've got a screen full of helmet for a decent part of uh, that video, but hopefully nice seeing the full sequence of the Civics and display. And I'm ranting about quality because the next video is uh, recorded last year. So hopefully, hopefully half decent. Um, a little bit of tricky lighting conditions here at NATO days in Ostrava in the Czech Republic. Uh, this is the Vigan display from the Swedish Air Force historic flight. Děkujeme za komentář. Poručí koukej, koukej, budeme všechno vědět na základě základě. 
jako letek s kvačáca. No a předám je tedy další, druhá dnešní část soutěže Firefighter Combat Challenge, letošní novinky hasičské soutěže, která je premiérou na letošním ročníku. Na to včera jsme viděli i soutěže proti sobě profesionální hasiče dnes. What an awesome aeroplane the Vigan is, and uh, remarkable that we still see one flying, even you know now. Um, imagine what we'd have in the UK if we had aircraft of a similar era flying. And uh, Artful uh, pointing out that uh, he clocked it actually it, uh, before the manoeuvre occurred. So the classic Vigan manoeuvre is that short landing, the thrust reverse, the re the reverse, a little three point turn on the runway, or Two point turn, I suppose. Um, yeah, reverse and go back up the way you can. And that was a classic uh, flown by Stellan Anderson from the Swedish Air Force historic flight. Uh, that uh, display taking place at NATO Days last year in 2019. And um, I'll answer you here rather than in the chat, Graham, who's asking about old Luca's uh, DVDs, which he doesn't have anymore. Are they still available? I said yes, they are. Of course, would never fail to. Uh, mention a plug for watch.planestv.com or on-demand subscription service online where all of those programs are. Graham asking though, and it's a good question, are the in-cockpit sequences available that we used to put, you know, longer special features on of the in-cockpit sequences of this display? The honest answer is that probably not. No. Um, we'll put the full 90-minute program up. Um, but we are now in a situation where we can throw these, these pieces of content up there and the Sea Vixen, video that we've watched just now is an example of that. None of that material have seen, has seen the light of day before, or, or really only four minutes of it probably in the Biggin Hill 2009 programme because we were limited on runtime on those programmes. So Graham, if there are some in-cockpit sequences that you are, you are aware that we have recorded over the years and would like to see again, I'd be very happy to go digging through hard drives and pop them up on the on-demand service for you. Give me a couple. Um, if you're subscribed to the email newsletter, you can reply direct to me. You'll find a link in the description below to that to subscribe to the email newsletter if you're not. Um, but yeah, get get in touch and uh, throw a couple at me and I'll pop them on the on-demand service or maybe even YouTube. We'll see. We do have another example of that coming up, actually. I went back to Kemble, and I can call it Kemble, in 2011, the air show there. We had the NF-11 Meteor flown by Dan Griffith. I have to think about it. If he's a fifth, if -ith, or an if -ith's. Um Flying with the Venom, a uh, little, little formation routine and a nice aerobatic routine from the Meteor. Again, we cut that down to about three or four minutes. You'll see a full eight or nine minute sequence in a little while. But before we get there, another sequence from NATO Day's recent history. And I'm going to get myself into trouble calling this a classic jet. There's certainly one Air Force that would uh, like its hands on a few at the moment. This is the Slovak MiG-29 at NATO Day's last year. Press the button again. right up for good to see a um, Slovak aircraft rather than a, a Polish one. Yeah, you know, out in the Czech Republic. That was billed as a fly past, by the way. We got rather more than a fly past in the end. A really nice little sequence that at NATO Days last year. If you're not familiar with the show, um, there's very many videos that we produced for the event organiser uh, on YouTube and our own YouTube channel, I would think. There's certainly a few. Um, and yeah, more to come from that uh, through the year. 
Chris, bless you. You mustn't donate, Chris. You do for you do plenty for us um, moderating the chat as you do, but uh, pointing out that you can indeed leave a super chat, and I will definitely give you a mention if you do, um, and maybe even a request. You know, you throw enough money at me, I'll start digging through hard drives. Um, and who else? Ryan, I want to say good evening to you too. And someone timely. Uh... Originally designed for the Navy for use on aircraft carriers, the Buccaneer was foisted onto the RAF as a stopgap after the TSR-2 cancellation, but proved to be a very capable fighter. Buccaneers served with distinction in the Gulf War, laser marking targets for tornadoes and also delivering their own As um, Artful's quite rightly pointing out again, Ollie Suckling asking for some Stripe Master as he would. Um, no, sadly, it's far too cutting edge for that, Ollie. You know, not not, not classic jet yet. Um, everyone wants to get an ice cream. Oh, bless you. Uh, loving this stuff, says Lane. Love the buck. Yeah, I'm glad that came through okay. We've, we're, if you haven't cottoned on yet, we're having some um, internet woes. And Artful says, I should be using my uh, my gadget, which bonds for connections, rather than just relying on my 30 megabits per second upload link at home, which has reliably worked every day for months until I want to do a public live stream. And here we are. So I promise I'll use that next time. Uh, dirty engines with a norm in the 60s, says Artful. Yeah, quite right. What a display, though, those Buccaneers. So more airplanes from the same era now. And um, I've tried, tried to avoid Vulcan in this live stream. We've done so much on Vulcan over the years. Um, but it, it has snuck in into this otherwise a VC-10 video. It's interesting to note when we see these aircraft together that the VC-10 first flew in 1962, only 10 years after Vulcan first flew. site that was not one that I witnessed 
at Bryce Norton in 2009. The old man doing the filming there, but uh, a yeah, remarkable sight of the TVC tens with uh, Vulcan um, that year. The things we've lost, they eh, over the years, but um, there we go. That's makes streams like this so uh, it's more entertaining. Uh, next up, we've got that video I mentioned earlier, the NF11 with Venom from um, Air Atlantic, Classic Wings, uh, Coventry, Gigafactory. Uh, yes, uh, it was displaying at Kemberley in 2000 and mm, probably 2009 again, I think. No, 2011 it will have been. And another example of, yeah, having the time and opportunity to put together the full sequence. I don't know about you, I really quite enjoy watching a full air, air show routine, um, especially when you've got an in-cockpit view forward facing for the aficionados as well. So you get a bit of an idea of what Dan's uh, thinking about and doing throughout the display. What did I spot? Some comments in the chat over here. Oh, someone mentioned um, Hawk T1s and, and Frado as well. And uh, obviously we've, we've lost the T1s, the uh those formation um uh what did they do they did a bit of a farewell tour the RAF and the navy as well and i got all the gear ready to do to get out and about and um record some of that but just couldn't quite justify the time in the end which is real sad uh no don't say that very sad was that the gigafactory uh chris or um yeah sad to see yeah part of the motivation for doing this classic jet thing this evening was um i spent some time uh, a week or ten days ago with a vampire that was doing some filming for a, for a movie, a full, a proper movie, uh, which was quite exciting. And uh, a week before that, I was chatting with some yeah, classic jet owners about um, the trials and tribulations. As well, yeah, I've got, no, I don't have any actually. I nearly, I nearly um, put through the tornado in, but it's narrowly escaped, partly because my Nice stuff for Lucas in 2006. Wasn't playing ball this evening. A bit like my internet. Hope it's settling down, guys. And thank you for persisting with it. I promise I'll plug this in next time. Let's take a look back then to Kemble 2011. And this two ship display and then a bit of a solo routine from the media that year. out that um, there's no commentary on these um, sequences. Sorry, you may not be able to hear me clearly. So there's no commentary on these sequences. You've just got the sound of uh, engines whirring up and down, um, but hopefully still entertaining. entertaining. Um, lovely stuff here, as I say, from Campbell. Peter Fisher asking in the chat whether we have any um, mosquito material. And we do, we do indeed, uh, recorded in the early 90s. I'll have a think about where we might, and uh, mid 90s actually. So uh, Flying Legends 96, gosh, that's got to be pretty tight on when the aircraft sadly met its demise. Um, yeah, mid 90s, lots of our catalogue, again, available on the on-demand service, featuring the mosquito, much missed aeroplane.
hopefully two interesting perspectives there of uh, the meteor display, one over Dan's head from the cockpit and the other uh, air side, if you hadn't noticed, uh, the camera positioned pretty well on the display axis, which um, is something I'd normally try and avoid, but obviously it, uh, an opportunity arose that year by the looks of it. Um, a fairly recent material, I mean, we're going back, what are we talking? 11 years there to the uh, Kemble show that year. Um, hopefully the materials of a acceptable quality. The next video may be slightly less acceptable, but I hope the subject matter is uh, worth it. Um, so we're heading back to, I've forgotten, the, the show. Someone's going to have to guess it. It's either Alconbury or Lakenheath, early 90s. Yeah, Alconbury, I think, 91. Um, this features the Jaguar. Now, I thought it was T33, but someone mentioned Golden Apple's CC133, which I assume, that's the Canadian designation, I assume. Um, again, not an, not an airplane, I know. as well. Let's take a look back to Alconbury.
Sechi saying, I'm spoiling you with the Raspberry Ripple camera there and even a Nimrod, an extra classic jet sneaking in in the background there. I'm glad you're feeling spoiled. I hope the uh, connectivity issues aren't spoiling the thing too much. Um, what you look, That camera ended up at uh, Bruntingthorpe, I think. Uh, sadly, no longer in one piece and... Um, yeah, I'm not really, not really sure what happened there. I think the nose might have ended up in the US. Ah, oh, the camera, and Ryan asking about the camera that um, Falcon to the Sky had. That's still at uh, Doncaster. And last time I sp spoke to them. I'm, I'm um, in formation with another Venom, and I'm uh, I'm messing about with the throttle and the air brake and whatever to keep in, in with him. We are very conscious of the fact that these are old aeroplanes um, and we try not to push them too hard. Um, we we um, do and, they're, and they're, they look quite good in the aeroplane. The Venoms are one of the Royal Air Force's early jet fighters. They saw some service in the Malayan emergency, that's the Malayan National Liberation Army. And later on, in the infamous Suez Crisis in 1956, attacking ground targets around the contested Suez Canal. I'd like to describe them as the second of the de Havilland V fighters, as Vampire and Venom and Vixen. Two more magnificent old classic jet aircraft, the Sabre which came in in the late 1940s and the Hunter which came in in 1951. Both of them were world speed record holders at one time or another and we're actually quite lucky to be seeing the Sabre still here because in 2009 it was quite definitely stated that it had been sold to the United States and was going to leave the country. So it was a nice unexpected pleasure to have it still here in 2010. The Sabre, flown by Mark Linney, belongs to Golden Apple Operations, or well, for the time being. This particular day. And of course it came into service when P-51 Mustangs and P-47 Thunderbolts, both piston-engine aircraft. Well, now this Hunter is quite extraordinary airplane. It's flown by Jonathan Whaley, whose nickname is Flapjack, after some trouble that he got into when he was flying in the Navy on sea vixens. But he designed this amazing colour scheme and it's intended to suggest something re-entering from space and heating up in the atmosphere and that's why the colour scheme is like this. She's called Misdemeanor. And one of Flapjack Whaley's trademarks, I don't think anybody else does this, is that he does a slow fly past in the Hunter with the canopy open. So of course it's another opportunity to wave back at him. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you, Lane, for your comment saying this is a lovely way to spend an evening. I agree if I wasn't sweating so much over the uh, dodgy connection. Sorry about that. Thank you very much for those of you that are sticking around. Um, I'll sort it out for next time. I'll plug in my four connections as opposed to one and uh, do a best job, which I would normally do. I just got far too um, relaxed and I'm not quite into the swing of the live streaming again. That's part and parcel of why I'm doing this now to uh, get ready for the season proper. Um, what else did I spot? Oh yeah, he did make me laugh out loud as well, talking about the Nimrod that we saw briefly there. Lane saying that was the one and only Air Cadet flight where he were, he threw up. Uh, they were chucking it about and trying to make the Air Cadets uh, throw up. Two bags. Mm. Less, less we hear about that, the better I think. Um, a few more videos to go. Just a couple actually. We started the stream with a bit of Bimbrook action. Lightning uh, arriving to Bimbrook. In fact, the last one there in 1992 still there now do check out the facebook page of xr724 you can see the work that the guys are doing up at uh, bimbrook to get that aircraft into uh, better condition condition well worth a follow there we'll finish the stream with them some bimbrook lightnings the last lightning air show again slightly ropey material at an awful weather as uh, if you're aware of that event you will know but before that, I thought we'd head back to Campbell for some really very nice weather. Um, this, actually, this material, oh gosh, are you going to get a nasty eye dent pop up? You probably are. Well, I've just saved you from my horrendous music I used for about 10 years. Let's sort that out. There we go. So all you'll get is lovely Griffin and Avon instead. This is the Spitfire and Hunter, Hunter of Delta Jets and Rolls-Royce Spitfire flying at Campbell in 09, I think. Gorgeous sight there and sound. Uh, Spitfire and Hunter at, uh, at Campbell. Uh, I like this piece that got me laughing out loud again, saying uh, uh, Lane's experience on the Nimrod making it the original Vomit Comet. I like what you did there, Peter. Very clever. Uh, I'm not going to read out that Lane because I haven't read it and processed it. And if I end up reading stuff out of the chat, you never know what you're going to say. If you've enjoyed what you've seen today in between the internet connection, my internet connection woes, which I will sort out for next time and use the appropriate gear, which I should have done. Do make sure to like the video. Do subscribe, of course, on YouTube if uh, you haven't already. And if you would like to support me in what I do and maybe uh, improve my apparently horrendous internet connection, uh, do check out uh, watch.planestv.com. That's our on-demand service where you'll find very many of these uh, full-length programs uh, stretching back 30 years. I haven't got this next one on, actually. This is Bimbrook, um, 1987. Um, I think I probably was there. I would have certainly been on the fence as a little sprog watching the end of the lightnings uh, around this period, where the dad dragged us up on the rainy weekend day that this turned out to be. I'm not sure. Um, some really erratic lightning material coming up next. Um, Oliver saying great stream, great stuff. And Artful saying, now I know where Spit and Typhoon idea came from. Yeah, they've done that over the years, haven't they? I heard rumours. Um, yeah, maybe we'll see it again. Who knows? Um, yeah, this and you've enjoyed. And certainly if you sign up, there is a free month available. So do sign up now. 
big thing on the homepage, just pop your email address in and you'll get some emails that explain how to get a free month on the service. Do feel free to drop me an email and say, hey, Ian, I know you've got some really nice uh, ink material of the Spitfire at Biggin Hill in X year. Please can we see it on the service? You know, I, I'm, I'm not immune to a bit of peer pressure if uh, if you fancy making requests in that way. Let's have a little bit more bin and lining, shall we? I will pop on at the end. If you've got any questions to me about the upcoming season, do feel, th- feel free to throw them into the chat. Um, Let's get stuck in with some lightning, shall we? Again, this is really early days of my old man dragging a camera out to airfields, pointing it at airplanes. The mater- the quality of the material, maybe I'm being overly po- apologetic, I don't know, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, it's of its time, shall we say.
good to see that bit of lightning footage going down so well in the chat. Um, as I say, material of its time, but with the conditions made it a pretty special air show moment. Someone asking what the team was. It, not a team as such. This is um, the final days of the lightning. So lightning, t lightning teams were a distant memory at this point. This was a display worked up for the retirement of the aircraft and um, on the same program. Uh, so that that was from a program that my dad did release uh, called Lightning Attribute. And on the same program, there's a bit of material of the display work up in the week before in glorious sunny conditions. And it's lovely. But uh, yeah, there's something about those dreary Lincolnshire skies, which I know very well. And that made that some, uh, yeah, some pretty dramatic uh, bit of video. That's it. That's my little selection of um, classic jets uh, for the evening. Thank you very much for persisting with the awful internet uh, problems. I will plug in my four connection bonded clever system that I really should have been using and would have been if it was client work, but uh, got a bit overconfident. Um, any other questions in the chat that I spotted? Let me think. Yeah, Lane's saying only ever saw a lightning a couple of times. I mean, I spent my youth on the fence of that airfield watching lightnings. I, ca I can't remember any of it, I'm afraid. I do remember 724, the delivery flight that we um, started this stream off. I'd have been eight, I suppose. You'd think I'd remember more. And um, thanks, Chris, for tuning in. I hope the uh, trial's going well. Um, and Lane's saying top job. And good to hear from you, James, uh, as well. Can't reveal too much of what we're doing this season yet. It's the, you know, I've got a meeting with a few shows at the tail end of the month and lots of conversations going on um, at the moment. We're ready and able and looking forward to a busy year. Not quite as busy as we'd hoped. Sadly, losing Yeovilton. That was really sad to see that one going. It's been, um, gosh, we've been doing the show, you know, almost as long as Planes TV's existed. We've been toing and froing from Yeovilton over the years. So very, very sad to see that not taking place this year. And thank you for the good wishes over Easter, guys. That's very kind of you. And a great evening of pure nostalgia, says Les. Yeah, Les, yeah, it is um, it is all nostalgia, isn't it? But uh, yeah, good stuff. And as I say, that, that on-demand uh, service is always available. And if you haven't tried it out for new subscribers, you can head over to watch.planestv.com for a free month on the service, which is not bad going, is it? That's fairly, uh, fairly generous, I hope. Let's give you a little bit of a music and uh, I'll leave you with a leave you with a logo. That's all I've got. I'll do I'll do a bit more of a produce job next time, shall I? Probably with a better internet connection as well. Uh, Peter saying great program. Thank you. It's it's very easy. Well, it's not very easy. It takes a bit of time putting these together, but you know we got thirty years of air show um, material to go back to. So there's very much more I'd like to share and. It's an honest request that, you know, if you know stuff, if you know we've got stuff in our archive that you'd like to see out there, do feel free to drop me an email. Email newsletter, there's a link in the description on how to sign up to that. That's a very good way of keeping in contact. Two-way thing, I send it out to thousands of people and one or two come back to me. Do feel free to reply, I read every one. And uh, yeah, it's a nice way of keeping in touch with folks. All right, I'll leave it at that. Thanks very much, everybody. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Yeah. Not very impressive. Blocking my face with my logo. Oh, whatever. The end. Bye bye. <laughs>